Καλησπέρα σας καλή φίλη τηλεθεατές. Good evening to you. It's Sunday again, 8 o'clock, and here we are with a new face. And uh, we have to uh, welcome him. It's the first time with us. Uh, and, um, Καλησπέρα. Καλησπέρα. Ah, and that's, uh, this is a big surprise. You, you speak a couple of Greek words as Little, well. Yeah, maybe yeah. five. Five. <laughs> well, Καλησπέρα, um, welcome. Καλώς όρισες. Um, welcome. I'm learning more all the time. Okay. How are you? I'm very good, thank you. Yes, uh, name is Lance Nielsen. That's correct. And you are the director of the new film, which is coming out very soon, called The Journey. Uh, to I'm, the, I'm the writer of The Journey. Of the, the writer. The writer and the director. And the director. Yeah. You wrote yeah. the story and directed it as yeah. well. Yeah. Okay, but before we go to that, let's just give us a little bit of background. I mean, you are a theatre director, actually. You work in a theatre. For quite a bit of time, you know, give us some more details about that. Yeah, I worked um, on the sort of London fringe and off West End theatre scene from about '97 until about 2006, and I did about 14 plays. Mm -hmm. um, one, well, got Time Out's Critics' Choice uh, mention a couple of times, and I won a Peter Brook Award, um, and I did quite a lot of social and political drama, so film, mm -hmm. f uh, plays about real people, sort of real human emotional stories and in the social and political arenas. Um, probably the two plays that I'm the most well known for are the one about the Victoria Climbia inquiry, which mm -hmm. of course concerned Haringey Council, which are just up the road from here. Mm. And then um, the other one was the Hillsborough football disaster, oh. waiting for Hillsborough. So those are the two that I'm probably the most Sort of well known for. I suppose you wrote this as well, yeah? Yeah, the, the, the Victoria Climbia inquiry was taken from the actual transcripts of the public inquiry. Uh -huh. so, um, and you turned it to a and Yeah, a, it was turned a into play. a play, yeah. Okay. I recreated sections of it mm -hmm. with a lot of actors. Um, the Hillsborough play was about two fictional families waiting for news of mm -hmm. the disaster on the day. So mm -hmm. both of those plays kind of dealt with very sort of real human emotional Exactly, issues. as you say, social, uh, political. Yeah. Yeah. Um, give us uh, your uh, background as, um, you know, I mean, a young kid, how you become, you know, into this, kid, right. acting, all this kind of thing. I mean, is, is something yeah, you, you, you inherit or uh, how uh, were you getting uh, into this? Well, my, my father was a graphic designer, Gunnabang Nilsson, my late father. Uh, although he was in the Danish resistance when he was a kid. Mm -hmm. um, my, my mother was a ballet dancer and teacher, so I was never really going to become an accountant. <laughs> and <laughs> and not, be, not the ballet dancer. I was, I was in, a, in a creative uh, yeah. mix. So I was always interested in film, and actually I always wanted to work in film. Uh -huh. um, but when I started working in film, I actually made a feature film on video format. Okay. And it's just, you know, when you project that on a cinema screen, it looks horrible. Yes. Um, so until the digital era came along, I was never really able to make mm -hmm. a, a feature film. But you did a couple of short films as I well. Do, yeah? I've done a couple of short films, mm -hmm. and, um, but just lots of theatre. And I always try to make my mm -hmm. theatrical plays quite filmic okay. um, in nature. I've been writing since 95 probably mm -hmm. um, and directing plays in London since 97. Okay yeah. and how this idea came on I mean you know the journey the city and it's based in uh, Greece. It, it, it's it's set in it's 90 percent set in Greece um, and um, a little bit of the film is it starts in London and then it flashes back to Greece. The story behind the, the story of the film is quite interesting um, I, uh, in, in the year of 2009, I lost quite a few people who were close to me uh -huh. in, in a very short space of time. I lost my, my mother to cancer, my, my uncle and um, my best friend Angela. My, in, fact, in fact, my uncle and my best friend Angela died within three days of each other. Sorry to hear that. And, and Angela was very young and I was writing a play with her uh -huh. when she died. 
And she died on the Friday, and my uncle died on the Sunday. Oh my God. And on the Sunday, I was in a chat room looking for somewhere to go in Europe yes. to get away, because okay. people said to me, you need to get away. All right. And a, a chat box popped up from an English guy who said he was on a Greek island called Agistri mm -hmm. at this hotel, and I should go there, it's just what I needed, because mm -hmm. I'd kind of been screaming in yeah. the room. This okay. was like four o'clock in the morning on Sunday. I, couldn't, I hadn't slept for about four days. My God. And um, on Monday morning, I went to Thomas Cook and said, can you get me to Greece tomorrow? Because they had one room left in the hotel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the first week of August. Uh -huh. So, and then on Wednesday morning, I was on the Greek island. And you got that, yes. So I, I went there and I was in Greece for a week and I think that week in Greece probably saved my life because yeah. I think I probably would have done something stupid if I hadn't have gone because mm -hmm. I was in a very bad place mentally. I know, I know. Uh, so you start writing you know, while you were there? or No, God, no. Uh, I, that was the furthest thing from my mind. Um, it, it was about, it was a year later I went back to the same island and the same hotel with another friend of mine mm -hmm. um, to show her what it was like. And I think it was on that trip the seeds were in my mind that I might one day do a film about this. Mm -hmm. um, but it was more, I was thinking, uh, more fictional. And um, in the end, the, the, the journey became a, a film about two men, both of whom lose somebody. One guy loses his wife, and the other guy loses his best friend. Mm -hmm. And um, they both go to, to Greece having lost these people um, with actually no hope whatsoever. And they've both gone on the advice of a stranger who mm -hmm. they've never met. So they both, somebody on the internet tells them to go. Like you, for example. Like me, yeah. yeah. And so. they go at different times and mm -hmm. you see their stories told by a guy in London. Okay. So it's all about people dealing with loss and pain and how they overcome that. But the, the more important aspect of the story is, and this happened to me when I was in Greece as well, is it's about people who, even when you're in your worst place, mm -hmm. sometimes you can still help somebody else who's exactly. feeling worse than you. Because you have the feeling and you, 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 you manage to overcome your problem. Yeah, That's why you are yeah. able to help others. Yeah, I mean, in yeah. some ways, or, or it's just a willingness to do so. Mm -hmm. um, I met a woman who was going through a really bad um, divorce with um, a Greek husband mm -hmm. on the island. And even though I'd just lost my friend, my mother and my uncle, I kind of ended up counselling her. Mm -hmm. And in the story, we have a, a woman who's based on that character. Yeah. yeah. So it's based on real stories and partly is your biography? Um, 20 percent. I've changed everything. Mm -hmm. So, um, mm -hmm. But every character that, I, that, that is in the story, um, uh, their, their expression and what they say about Greece is all based on somebody I met. Okay. So there's one man who speaks very passionately about what he feels is wrong with Greece at the mm -hmm. moment, and mm -hmm. that is based on a guy that I met who articulated yes. that story true, um, to me. You know, feelings. So everything is based on true mm -hmm. feelings. It's yes. all, there's a lot of truth in the story. Okay. Yeah. So uh, when did you start? Um, you know, I mean, you you have the story ready and the script was ready. When did you start filming? And all this? Uh, it wasn't quite as simple as that. What what happened was um, I, I I tried to write the the script as a present for a friend of mine called Jason Fleming, who's an actor who's in the film, he's yes. quite, quite famous. He's known, yeah, he's known, yes, that's yeah. right. Yes. Uh, and um, I tried to write it and it didn't work, uh -huh. so I left it. And I went to this thing called the Guerrilla Filmmakers Workshop, which is a big filmmaking weekend in uh -huh. London, run by a friend of mine called Chris Jones, and I wasn't even gonna go. Yeah. And it just happened, two things happened at that workshop, one was, Chris made me realise in the digital world I could make a film for not a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And the second thing that happened was I met five Greek girls who all wanted to become producers. Okay. Um, two of them who are probably stand quite a good chance of doing so. And um, they were the people that started helping me mm -hmm. when I said, I've got this idea for a film. I hadn't written, I'd written two scenes, the beginning yeah. and the ending. Okay. Nothing in between. <laughs> Um, and it was after I met the girls and said, guess what, I'm, I called them up and afterwards and said, I'm going to make this film after all, will you help me yes. on £10,000? Okay. Uh, right. Crazy, crazy. And, um, Very low budget, yes. Yeah, extremely. We raised a bit more after that. But, but yeah, so that's how it started. And then I started writing the script mm -hmm. and the script took, took me about six months after that. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, the film now, it's uh, on the process of, um, you know, uh, Finishing the post production. Post production, yeah, yes. Yeah. And uh, I suppose uh, you use um, a couple of uh, Greek actors, uh, known actors, and you use, as you say, 
Jason Fleming and somebody else uh, who is known. The two, well, there's a couple of very well-known English actors in um, Jason Fleming's internationally well-known. Lindsay Coulson, who's in a very well-known English television series called EastEnders. EastEnders. She has a big storyline at the moment. She plays Carol Jackson. She's suffering from cancer. Okay. She plays the British woman, woman going through the messy divorce. All right. In the film, it's a messy divorce with an Italian man, not a Greek man. Uh-huh. So, Why are you changing that? Change. You should have. Uh, um, yeah. I've met quite a few women who've had messy divorces with Italian men as well, so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mix it up a bit. You know, okay. I didn't want it to be too um, right. true to life. Uh, I didn't want. I didn't. I didn't. I wanted to base it on people I'd met, but I didn't want to. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, completely feel yes. I'd invaded yes. that person. You got the story, and yeah, just you just altered it a bit. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. Um, the 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 other actors from the UK that are in it are um, Duncan Powell, who's been in Holby City. Um, Valile Tishalabla, who's been in Doctor Who, and then we have a couple of newcomers, Charlene Collins and Mark Zammett, and mm-hmm. Dickon Tolson, who's a really good British actor who's been around for a long time but hasn't had a big break. Mm-hmm. And this this will be the biggest part he's ever done, and, and he's, he's fantastic. Might be his break as well. I th- yes. I, yeah, I mean, he's, he's worked a lot, but he's yeah. just not had a big yeah, a big know. role, and he should really, because he's very did, good. Did you get, I mean, you say you get a little bit of funding, how you manage to get in, where? Well, the Greek girls, we were extremely lucky from the Greek people on the islands of Kia and Egina. We had a family called the Crassus family Mm -hmm. who basically saved the film because we were coming close to shooting and we realised we didn't have enough money. And they offered us their hotel completely for free for all the cast and all the crew for the whole shoot. That's good. So without that, there would have been no film. So that got us to the first shoot. On the second shoot, because we went to Greece twice, because we, we didn't have enough money to do it all in one go. Yes. Um, the second shoot, a hotel called the Costa Catechias. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Yeah, Costa Catechias. Eh? Yeah, on, on, on Kia. Right, and yes. then um, Blue Studios and another island, another hotel called the Porta Kia Suite. So three hotels mm-hmm. on Kia. They gave us their hotels for free. Mm-hmm. Um, and we filmed actually at um, um, Costa Catechios and we filmed at Blue Studios as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so they became locations in the film also. Um, and uh, those, those hotels were really key. Mm-hmm. Without those hotels, there would have been no movie. Yeah. We had some other people that helped us out in other ways. Mythos gave us some free beer. Um, we had a ton of free feta cheese from somebody, mm-hmm. so we, we had this huge pile of feta cheese. So you eat cheese We just ate cheese day. the whole time. Three times a day. Basically, cheese yeah. and salad and... It's good. <laughs> yogurt. Oh, yeah. Greek yogurt. Yogurt, yeah. We had yogurt, some, yeah. There's the, the sponsors, actually. They're on yeah, the back they're here. They're on here, yeah. You so can, we can see them, yes. We can so, show it to the camera. Yeah. And we see those, are the, those are some yeah, of the sponsors. Yeah. Not all of them, but the, some of the sponsors. Yes. Gutos Lines got us to the island for free. Flying Dolphin. You know, uh, I congratulate congratulate these people, you know, the sponsors of the time, yeah. because I'm in this business and I know what it's all about. I mean, to uh, want it to do something, yeah, to help, good. you know, to promote the culture, to promote the, uh, the country, to promote, uh, you know, hotels, to promote uh, the beauty of uh, your country over another country, mm. and it's difficult. And when you find yeah. these people, they help you with this. Uh, anyway, uh, you know, uh, you, you manage to do what you want to do, and uh, I, I um, say, you know, uh, these people are uh, the most important thing in this business. It was it was fantastic. We we didn't get any help from the Greek government. Um, the Greek tourist board. They don't have any money. The no. government is dead now. You know but, what I mean. But so. one thing we did try was we really wanted to film on the temple mm-hmm. in Egina. There's a temple there. And they didn't give you any permission. Well, uh, no. We, they were asked for three thousand euros. Oh, and it was just, come we, on. We, no one was getting no one's getting paid on this film. We yeah, all worked yeah, for yeah. free. Okay, or def, what's called deferred. You pay their expenses. Obviously. We paid everybody's expenses, and you have a deferred fixed salary which if mm-hmm. the film breaks even you get paid later that's okay. including myself all the yeah. cast everyone mm-hmm. and um, uh, that we couldn't get the temple when we when we went back for the second shoot we could only afford to film on one island and um, on the island of Kia there is a really small temple you know that's ruined and you mm-hmm. have to hike to get to it okay. so we we filmed in that temple a little scene not really the scene that I wanted to do a very small scene yeah. um, so that if I have to cut it from the film I can yeah, but yeah, I think yeah. we're going to put it in yeah. because I, it looks good and it'll make Kia look good and it'll make Greece look good. That's but, it. but we didn't really have permission to film there, so I hope that they're not going to be too upset. With I me. don't think so. Don't show them the film. Okay. Anyway, tell me about the music. <laughs> I mean, you have a music which uh, is connected to the story, and I suppose, you know, because you film in Greece, do you have Greek music as well? Or? We do. Um, there's, 
there's three types of music in the film. Um, there's a we did want to do a scene with a um, like live Greek music and um, in the evening with uh, mm -hmm. Greek musicians and all this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but in the end, um, it's a background music, like uh, yeah. But it, it it just became impossible um, because of the timing. Uh, we we tried to fit so much in to a really short schedule; it just mm -hmm. wasn't possible. Um, the composer who's doing the score, Andrew Christie. He came on right at the beginning, and um, he, he was one of the people I met at the Guerrilla Filmmakers Workshop, mm -hmm. and he's been involved since day one, and he's already done probably 30% of the score. He came out to Greece twice and was mm -hmm. on set with us, mm -hmm. and he would come and watch a scene, and then the next day he'd, be, he'd set a little studio up in his hotel room, and come uh, and listen to this, yes. and it's, uh -huh. it was amazing. You know, yeah. He always nailed it just like that. Um, we have some songs from a British band called Ruby Lux, Mm -hmm. who are from Brighton, um, who I met when they're performing on the street. Okay. So, um, and they do a really powerful kind of um, mm -hmm. big ballad that's quite yeah. sad, um, and their songs on the end credits. Um, so that's basically the music, but most of the music is instrumental. It's not, okay. a, it's not a film with lots of big pop songs. I know what you mean, yes. Yeah. So uh, now the film is uh, in the, the process of um, finishing. Yeah, and close, uh, close. Tell us uh, what you're planning to... Uh, when and where you plan to uh, show in? Well, there's going to be two screenings this year. Um, they're, they're sort of screenings for cast and crew and distributors, but there's going to be a limited number of um, tickets on sale for the public. One of them is going to be on Sunday... No, sorry, one, one screening in London is going to be on Thursday, the 27th of November. Mm -hmm. That is going to be confirmed, but I'm going to say the date because I'm 99% certain yes. that is going to be the date. Okay. And I'm pretty sure it's going to be at Cineworld Haymarket on Shaftesbury Avenue, Screen 1, Thursday 27th of November. Okay. You'll know when, it, when you can buy the tickets because there'll be an announcement on the Facebook page uh -huh. um, and there'll be a link where you can get them. And as soon as you see that link... If, buy you, your if you don't buy your ticket immediately, yes. you will not get one. I know two people that are going to buy 50 tickets each, oh my God. and there's only 300 tickets. Yes. So, you know. Um, How about the second showing? The second showing is going to be in Thessus on Aliki, and actually that's first. Um, and I think that's going to be on November the 6th. Is this uh, during the you know, uh, festival? Or? It's, it's not directly as part of the festival. The festival are talking to us about maybe doing some kind of talk where uh -huh. I show the trailer for the film and talk about how okay. it was made. And okay. Because we, we don't have a cut to show them. Yeah, 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 so yeah. it's quite hard for them to put yeah, it to, to say yes, yes. Um, and they said, you know, sh show us something on Vimeo as soon as you can. Um, so, I mean, we, we talked to them, but the producers want to firm up something definite now. Mm -hmm. And um, the two producers that got us most of the stuff for free, they're from mm -hmm. Thessus on Leaky. So I always promised these girls that we would show the film in their town first. Which um, uh, is uh, Thessaloniki. Yeah, so it's um, Kiki mm -hmm. Fatiadou and um, mm -hmm. uh, Angela Angelidis. Um, okay. the they producers. live in Greece. Yes. They live in Greece. Mm -hmm. They're from Thessaloniki. Yeah. Um, Aggie and Kiki, as we call them. Mm -hmm. And um, Aggie and Kiki did a huge amount of work on the film. I mean, there's also Iona as well, another producer um, who's worked on it some of the time. Mm -hmm. um, who's also from Thessaloniki, and there were some other people that helped as well. Mm -hmm. We mentioned Greek actors, and I know yeah. there is a Greek actor, known actor, who was in uh, Nisi, in, uh, you know... Um, yeah, there's, there's two well-known Greek... The island. The, the, uh, Tassus Nusius has, yes. a, has a really small role uh -huh. in the film. Um, the, the part that I wrote for him originally was bigger, but um, when we came to shoot the second section of the film... He was busy. His schedule was, um, it was, it was varied, you know, mm -hmm. and I needed someone who was available for a big chunk of time. Exactly. So I had to basically take what I'd already filmed with him and make that as a cameo mm -hmm. and do something else with the story. It was all a question of saving money as well. Um, the other actor, a uh, Greek actor, is Stelios Kaslatis. Mm -hmm. He's quite well known yes, on Greek yes. television. Um, and he's a fantastic actor, actually. Um, mm -hmm. Really nice guy and uh, very giving yeah. on, on set. And um, it, we didn't have to do many takes with him. You know, mm -hmm. he would come in and he would yeah. nail it and, and we'd have lots of questions. He's kind of, kind of quite a quiet 
guy, mm -hmm. very unassuming, but I really like him mm -hmm. um, and I uh, can't wait to work with him again, actually. And we have another Greek um, woman who's half Greek, half Iranian, called uh, Shirin Yosefian, who's done quite a bit of opera. She um, lives in Greece. And she, yeah, and she plays mm -hmm. Rosie. And mm -hmm. the interesting thing about her is I met her at Rosie's Hotel the first time I went there. Oh, yes. And on the last two days of my first trip, I ended up staying with her and her husband in Athens. They okay. put me up in their apartment. Oh, lovely. Which was, and they came to my wedding. So you made good friends in... Uh, yeah, I, that was, that tri like I said, that trip mm -hmm. saved my life. Yeah. It, it, it really did. Yeah, definitely, 100%. Yeah. So uh, now, uh, I mean, okay, you show, you have these two showings, one in Thessaloniki and one yeah. in, uh, you know, Shaftesbury Avenue at yeah. uh, 27. Yeah. Uh, what plans, what are the plans? I think after that, it's a question of do we do a Papadopoulos and Sons and try and distribute it ourselves? Um, and if we do, we're going to need the support of yourselves and yes. London Greek Radio and Greek newspapers and mm -hmm. the Greek community in the UK to support the film like they did. Uh, um, I mean, this is a very different movie from Papadopoulos and Sons, and this is Papadopoulos and Sons is a, a fish out of water film about Greeks in London opening yeah. a chip your restaurant when they were rich with lots of money and now they're poor. I know the, I know the story because yeah. I've been in it. Uh, that's right, you were in it. You had a small part in it. <laughs> yeah, I did, yeah. But The Journey <laughs> is a film about Greece and, and um, one of the reasons that there's quite a controversial scene in, in, in the film, um, which is to do with the shooting of Alexandros Gridolopoulos, which we were talking yes. about. One of the reasons that scene is in the film is we didn't want the film just to be about some guys who go to Greece that feel bad and, oh look, Greece is beautiful, great, we feel better, we go home. That to me was, was too simple mm -hmm. and it wasn't a true reflection of all the pain that Greece is in at the minute. And the character of Nondas, who's the owner of the hotel, he is a man who's in a lot of pain and his character is like the conscience of your country. Mm -hmm. And through him, we, we feel and we see Greece's pain and Greece's divisions. And he has a very big scene where mm -hmm. he talks, this is the biggest scene in the movie, it's about Explaining 12 Explaining the situation, minutes. yes. Yeah, and he, he mm. talks about the politics and talks about the shooting of Grigolopoulos and how that almost led to a revolution mm -hmm. very close with, yeah. you know, there were lots of different people from different classes uh -huh. on the, on the, on the, on the, involved in the riots. It mm -hmm. wasn't just the anarchists. and. Um, and just uh, the things that he feels are wrong with the country. <clears throat> and that conversation was based on a conversation I had in Greece with somebody. And also, I went to the islands, and yes, the islands was beautiful. But I also went, I spent th three days in Athens. And Athens was a city that was, um, I felt, was full of division. Mm -hmm. And there was a big divide between rich and poor. And, and I really saw that a lot. Might and be true, yes. And yeah. They have so many, you know, um, foreigners as well, you know, I mean, well, which uh, yeah. is another, um, you know, I mean, divided in three. is the poor, uh, the rich and the people who are coming uh, to yeah. Greece for, immigrants. you know, bad immigrants. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah and I mean, that, that's also interesting because we have a couple of, um, I suppose the technical word is African-American, if you like. They're not American, actually. They're African characters. Um, or uh, black, let's just call them black. We have a couple of black characters in, in the film. Colours. I think you should call them black. <laughs> okay. I'd be upset if you call them that. Okay. Um, I think black is, <laughs> is probably the best term. So, um, we, uh, two fantastic black actresses uh, play these roles, um, Charlene Collins and Valile Tushilabla. And um, uh, the character that they play is this woman dressed in a, a white dress and uh, she appeared on the original poster Mm -hmm. um, and we had this poster very early on, and when I showed it to uh, someone from Greece, they said, why is there a black woman on the poster? Um, the only black women in um, Greece sell handbags or are hookers. Oh my God. And, um, and also what she didn't know was that the woman on the poster was my wife. Oh. So I was like, right, okay. Um, I mean, to me, I, yeah. I don't think she meant to be... It hurts you. She didn't, I don't think she meant to be as offensive as she was, but yeah. you can't say that sort of thing without, yeah, yeah, without yeah. it, you yeah. know, offending somebody. And it, it's, yes. it's not a good thing to say. It might be uh, one perception, but saying that sort of thing only gives Golden Dawn and mm. those kinds of people a voice that, you know, and yeah. power that you probably don't want to be giving them. Yes, I know the feeling. Yeah. Anyway, uh, shall we go and see? I mean, we talked about all this and uh, yeah. we find out what it's about. 
And you have a trailer. Shall we go and see the we've, trailer? We've got a trailer from the first shoot in Greece. It doesn't have any clips from the second shoot in Greece. And okay. I understand you're going to show the second trailer later. Later, yes. Well, yeah. in a few weeks. We're going to have you here again before yeah. the show in, in London. I'm going to wear know. my red shirt next, Definitely. next time. Yeah. So. Like mine. Yeah, yes. okay. yeah. It's a bit, yes. you know, shiny. But uh, at the moment, we can show this one, the you one can. you have. You can. Uh, and uh, then we come back and just um, uh, talk uh, for a little bit more. Okay. Can we go and see the uh, video watch, clip, please? Let's Thank watch you. The, the first trailer we did. I just don't know how I'm going to cope. I just don't know how I'm going to get through this. Do you think that if bad things happen to you in your life, you're paying for sins that you committed when you were living as someone else? You seem so lost, lost to your place in this world. You must find yourself again, and you will. You must find your purpose in life again. Your reason for living. Look not for answers at home, for you will not find them there. You must change the space you inhabit. You must change the air you breathe. You must change the sounds that you hear. You must change the things that you see. Do this, and you'll be ready to face the world. I thought I was going to be like Shirley Valentine. Working in a bar, drinking wine every day by the sea. Fail, and you will only fail yourself. Your anger, your hatred for things you cannot control, will consume you, become part of you. Take all from you that is good, and leave only a shadow of who you were. Well, there you go then. Live fast, die young. Succeed? and you will learn to breathe again. You will learn to see again. You will learn to love again. You will learn to live again. Just know that I am always with you. How you behave in your life, what you do in the here and now is what counts. I know that you are lost, but this is a journey we must all take. And in time, you will find your way. You want to say something, yes? Uh, About the trailer. Was it, it was fantastic. Did you enjoy the trailer? I did, yes, I did. Fantastic. Obviously, yes, fantastic, yes. Great. I mean, you know, the most important thing is that you show the beauty of uh, uh, the country. And that, yeah. that is, uh, I, I you think know. that's probably 80% of the film. Mm -hmm. And I, I think we've got this one scene that kind of touches on, you know, what, what, what some people feel about where it's at. And, mm -hmm. um, uh, Greece to me, and I know so much about Greek history now because I've just read everything I can. Yeah. Just because I'm now so interested in your country, uh -huh. and um, and I want to go back there. I want to go to every island. You know, I, I would, I'm going to be going there for all my holidays. But um, yeah. I just uh, felt that we we couldn't just 
show beautiful islands and sunsets, we had to say something okay. more real than that. Yes, definitely. In yeah. at least one scene. Uh -huh. So you do have that. But um, that's not going to put anybody from going to, off to Greece. I mean, this, this film is going to make people want to go there. To Greece, yes, um, definitely. And I, you have to remember, I had never gone there mm -hmm. ever before I had that conversation with that guy in that chat yeah. room that led to me going to, to Talking Greece. about this, did you get any uh, money from the government, from the you know, tourism organization? No, no. You didn't. The, tourist, the, the Greek tourist board officially supported the film in the sense that they said that they officially supported the film. Well, that was all they did. Yeah, that's <laughs> um, all, yes. That helped us with, um, I, I suppose that helped us with negotiating with people like Flying Dolphin and mm -hmm. um, Echo gave us 3,000 euros worth of petrol. Uh -huh. So that was, we didn't pay for any petrol, so that was very helpful. Thank that's you, good. Echo. Yes. Um, you know, so these things did, did save us money. Mm -hmm. um, Definitely, yes. But nobody, I mean, I remember saying mm -hmm. about a week before we were due to go and do the first shoot to the producers and say, I can't believe we haven't managed to raise one euro mm -hmm. in cash. Mm -hmm. And um, we went, I went out to the, to the um, first shoot with 10,000 euros and my credit card, which could take another 3,000. And I came back with zero euros. In fact, all the euros were gone in four days and we were there for three weeks and um, my credit card was overdrawn when I got home. So that was the first shoot only, and we still had to go back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. But you managed to, uh, to do your best. Uh, yeah. Tell yeah. me about the crew. Was it from uh, England, and you had a crew from... Uh... We, we, had, we took a core crew out from England, because I had a core group of people that wanted to, to work on the film. On the second shoot, a couple of people even paid for their own flights. Mm. Um, Andrew Christie, the composer, paid for his flight twice to go out there. Um, one of the producers, a reader, who doubled as a production manager and about 50 other jobs um, did the same. Um, and, um, but uh, the, on the first shoot, we, we had a smaller unit on the second shoot because we had less money. On the first shoot, we had about half and half. We had a, a Greek production designer called uh, Stella Steliou. Mm -hmm. um, and then we had a couple of, uh, we had a, a second AD, Mar Mar Marisla. Um, or Marisa, Marisa, mm -hmm. um, who was really good. Um, and then we had a couple of runners as well, Darius um, uh, with his famous pink monkey in his car and um, uh, a couple of other people. Um, and then there was uh, various people that worked, that some that only came for a day here and a day there that mm -hmm. just helped us. Yeah. Um, Chrysula and oh, just lots of names that I can't pronounce properly. <laughs> okay. So, so before we um, uh, <coughs> say goodbye, uh, would you um, plan in any um, uh, you know uh, other films? I mean, what are your future plans? Um, it, I would actually, I would like to do a film about um, the shooting of Grigolopoulos. Uh -huh. and the whole story of that and yeah. of the court case with the policeman and uh, uh -huh. I'd be really interested in doing that and mm -hmm. I think because I'm completely neutral yeah maybe that's it's maybe it would be good for me to do it rather than somebody who has a bias you know yes. mm -hmm. um, but I'd be very interested in in exploring that mm -hmm. um, and I definitely want to do some more films set in Greece I really want to do something about the invasion of Crete uh -huh. I'm a really, really big history buff. I, I'm already aware that there's... Um, it's been just one film a long time ago about the invasion. Yeah, Greece, I think know. there's... I think The Cretan Runner, which is based on the book by George... I um, can't remember the surname, but uh, he, was, uh, one of the, he was a runner on the, the yeah. island. Uh -huh. I think that's gone into production, but I don't know if it's uh -huh. still happening. And Jonathan English is directing that. Mm -hmm. um, and I th that, I'm sure that'll be a good film. Ah, yes, they were. Um, I mean, they did that film. Didn't they? <coughs> I don't think they filmed yeah. it yet. I uh -huh. think it's in pre-production. Ah, okay. Um, but I'd, I'd like to do something um, mm -hmm. set in that same time. Um, yeah. I don't know when. I'd, I mean, I, I, you know, I'd like to work with Tassos and Stelios again. So mm -hmm. we're, we're, you know, we're talking about little things. Uh, there's a um, Saint Nicotarius was a very famous um, priest on um, Egana, and he's buried there. Yes. In the the church and we <clears throat> we were talking about him and that gave me some seeds for an idea for a film about mm -hmm. him because apparently he was the the church didn't like him because he got too popular oh. so yeah that's that, this is what i was told i, yeah, I, I, I haven't I researched know. it was yet. it the singer as well so I, I could be wrong was he singing as well 
I'm not sure. I'm uh -huh. not sure. I went to see where he was buried, and yes. people come from Russia and they come from to everywhere see, to, yeah. to come and see and you know yeah, and yeah. kiss and touch oh. the the coffin. And okay. I thought maybe a film about him as a man might, might be a good a, idea. Yeah, yes. it could be a really yeah, interesting story. story. If, if there is good people excuse to go and film in Greece again, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, I'm very interested in doing that. I've also got a um, a film that I've just finished about. Um, the Zambian um, football disaster. I don't know uh -huh. if you remember that, but that was when um, the Zambian team were all killed in the plane crash. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and <clears throat> in 2012, um, Zambia won the African Cup of Nations uh -huh. and they were actually expected to lose. Mm -hmm. And their uh, coach, uh, Harv Renard, uh, is um, the spitting image of the actor Nikolai Kostawadu. So I've written the, the script about the 2012 team who won, mm. and I'm hoping to send that script to him and get him attached and start with the air disaster mm. in 1993 and then jump forward. Um, yeah, so that's kind of another true star story, mm -hmm. you know, kind of tragedy but triumph yeah, yeah, over yeah. tragedy later. Um, so those are the kind of real human stories are the kind yeah. of things that interest me. Very interesting, very interesting and I uh, wish you all the best. I wish uh, Thank you, you, very know, much. you can be able to fulfill your dream, uh, dreams and um, you know, one day, who knows, uh, you might be in Hollywood. You know. I, I just, as long as I can work with good, good people and tell good stories, yeah. if it's in Hollywood, great, if it's in Greece, just as good. Lovely. So, um, and so uh, shall we remind the people about uh, the showing, which is possible the 27th of um, uh, November? Yeah, the best way to, to uh -huh. keep in touch about that. Website. Two, two things, you can go onto the website. Uh -huh. Give, us, give the, us a website. The yes. journeythemovie.com, it's on here. This blends in nicely to your background. Yes. It's blue for the flag of Greece, yeah. our brochure here. Okay. But the journeythemovie.com, so, and then, but Facebook is much more up to date because Facebook we update three times a day. And that's Greece the Movie. Grease the movie on Facebook, capital G for the country, capital T, capital M, Grease the movie. And there's photos, trailers, music videos, all sorts of stuff on there. That will be where we announce the ticket sales um, mm -hmm. for the London showing. Lovely. Um, just make sure you book them straight away because if you don't, you won't get in. We're, we're, we're already talking to the cinema about expanding the booking by 200 seats. Uh -huh. So if it sells out really quickly, we might might be able to expand it. more seats, yes. Yeah, yeah, possibly with a second screen. Beautiful. All right. Lance Nil Nilsson. Yeah, thank it's you very much. It's been nice to have you in my show. Thank you. And I wish you all the best again. And Thanks looking very much. forward to see the film. Um, my, me okay. too. I will bring you a new flower arrangement. Yes, please. Come in These are time. fresh, but you know. I think, but they don't look very Greek. I think we can get no, some more. No, they're not. More, more Greek. When you go to Greece. I'll bring some. Yes, please. Bring some back with me. <laughs> okay, beautiful. Okay. Thanks very much. Thank you. Κυρίες και κύριοι, καλοί φίλοι τηλεθεατές, κάπου εδώ θα πρέπει να σας καληνιχτήσουμε. We have to say uh, thank you very much for um, uh, watching and uh, we're going to be with you next uh, Sunday again at the same time, 8 o'clock, with a new face of faces. Until Kalispera. then, Kalispera or Kalinichta. Kalinichta, yeah, yeah, yes. depending Kalinichta. on the time. Kalinichta, yes.